Iceland's former prime minister, Geir Harda, has become the first political leader to be indicted on charges of mismanagement of his country's economic affairs during the financial crisis. He joins us now from Reykjavik, Iceland, to discuss the challenges ahead. Mr. Harda, welcome to Bloomberg News. Thank you so much for coming on today, sir. Sure, my pleasure. Mr. Harda, I was wondering if we might get your reaction to these charges against you. Well, uh, let me say at the outset that I don't think there is any justification for this uh, prosecution. These are criminal charges that have been brought against me on the basis of a 100-year-old uh, law um, and uh, without any criminal investigation. So I object both to the, the, the formal content of the charges, the, of the formal counts that have been brought against me, as well as the procedures. Mm. And I'm sure at the end of the day, uh, we, I will be completely vindicated. Mr. Harder, was Iceland's banking collapse due to too big to fail in your country, or was it more uh, a question of the global financial crisis was such that Iceland just got caught up in it? Well, it was partly that, and it was partly uh, the, 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 the bank's own doing. Uh, what it was not, and that has to do with this uh, prosecution, it was not uh, because of what was done in the political system. The political system in Iceland did not cause the, the crisis, and political decisions taken by me or, or my colleagues did not cause the collapse. There were much more complicated reasons for the collapse. Of course, there were mistakes made mm. in the political process, that's, right. that's for sure. I have some responsibility for that, of course. I have paid the political price for that by leaving politics. Right. But in my view, it is absurd to bring criminal charges against people like me who were in, in, in politics and who really right. at that time were trying to do the, their best to, to escape damage. Mr. Harda, should Iceland's central bank have been aware that its foreign currency reserves were just too small to bail out the banks? I think everyone was aware at the time that the, that the, the banks were getting too big for the system. And there was a determined effort in place at the time to try to reduce the balance sheet of the banks. And there was also an effort to try to increase the reserves uh, that were available, but the, uh, the international market at the time was not uh, ripe. Uh, it was not uh, possible to, right. for uh, the authorities to, to borrow that kind of money. Uh, Mr. Harder, back in April, a special commission was set up by Parliament, and it released a report that report said your government was repeatedly told how dangerous the instability in Iceland's financial sector was. Was your government slow to act, or did it fail to act? Of course, in retrospect, you can find uh, individual instances or moments uh, where, when you know now what happened, things should have been done differently. I, I accept that. But I don't think uh, uh, these are reasons enough to bring somebody to a criminal court uh, to face that, those kinds of charges. The, the report that came out in April uh, was initiated by myself and my government. We asked a commission to put everything on the table, everything that was done, including everything that uh, was my responsibility. They've come up with some interesting results. They have accused some of us of negligence, of not having reacted uh, in a sufficient way right. at the time. We accept that we made mistakes, but of, of course. course we did not foresee the collapse, uh, and if we had foreseen it, of course we would have reacted differently okay. at the time. I don't think anybody saw that, what was going to happen and, in, in September, October 2008. And, and Mr. Harder, we're going to ask you to stay with us through the commercial break. Welcome back to Bloomberg News, and we are joined once again by Iceland's former Prime Minister, Geir Harda. He's become the first political leader to be indicted on charges of mismanagement of his country's economic affairs during the financial crisis. He joins us once again from Reykjavik. Uh, Mr. Harda, thank you so much for staying through the commercial break. Uh, prior to the financial collapse in your country, uh, the Bank of England Governor Mervyn King, he offered to assist Iceland in reducing the size of its banking sector. That had been identified as a key weakness to the economy. Was that offer ever answered by your government? I'm not sure how formal uh, this uh, uh, initiative was on behalf of, of Mr. King. I know he was in, knew he was in contact with the governor of our bank. Uh, 
I'm sure that now that when we know what happened, uh, uh, talking to the Bank of England about this would have been a, a, a terrific idea at, at the time. But it still does not justify what is happening uh, here today, which is, in my view, a political game. Uh, my former political enemies or opponents are settling some political scores. And I think it's a very serious matter to criminalize the political process in the way that is happening right now. It will be a terrible precedent in the politics of this country. Uh, Mr. Hart, I, I understand that uh, you think that this is politically motivated, but again, in hindsight, is there anything that you or your government could have done to prevent this? Of course, there are things now that we know that we, we would have liked to have done. Had we known that we would have been facing a colossal crisis in, in September, October, of course we did not know that. Nobody knew that. Nobody knew that Lehman would, was going to go down on, on September 15th. Uh, you know, with hindsight, you can say a, a lot of things should have been done differently. Sure, I accept that. I've taken my share of responsibility. Uh, I've left politics, like I said. So have most of the other actors from, from this period, although not, not everybody. People in the current government, uh, there are still people in the current government, including the prime minister, right. who sat in my cabinet. So, so you know, th these things work uh, both ways. Right. Now, Mr. Harder, we have about 30 seconds left. What type of financial regulatory reform should be instituted in your country? Well, let me say at the outset that we thought we had the best framework because we had the same system as the rest of Europe. We had imported the European regulatory framework. Clearly, there were major uh, flaws in that framework. We will be working on uh, reform, much as the rest of Europe and the United States, cross ownership, uh, all kinds of things that uh, were allowed and should not have been allowed. Right. Uh, there were major uh, defaults in, in, a, in a lot of areas in the system. We're taking a serious look at all of that. Right. So is the rest of the world. All right. The former Icelandic Prime Minister Ger Harder joining us today from Reykjavik. Mr. Harder, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Sure, appreciate it.